Murray, Kentucky this afternoon outside the CFSB Center. The WKU Hilltoppers tip off their most challenging week of the season today as they take on the racers of Murray State University. Hello everyone, I'm Randy Lee along with Hal Schmidt. Welcome to our simulcast. These two teams are accustomed to winning, proud programs. That's the way this year has been for both teams. Murray State 7-1, four straight wins. The Hilltoppers are 8-2 with six consecutive victories. And how if they want to make it seven today, they'll be doing it without their leading scorer, T.J. Price, who has been lighting it up. He has been playing very well. The Hilltoppers will have to find a replacement for his 17 points a game. How, who are your players to watch in this one? Well, it's the All-American, all-everything for Murray State, Isaiah Cannon. Senior campaign off to a great start, 21 points per game and four rebounds and assists per game. And his counterpart for WKU at the point, Jamal Crook. His senior leadership will be vital today. It's coming off a 25.9 assist uh, outing the last game. The keys to a Hilltopper win are brought to you by HitSense. Well, the toppers are going to be in front of a very hostile crowd today, and they're going to have to maintain their composure. Secondly, toppers will need their best defensive team effort against the appropriately named Racers, a team who's averaging about 80 points per game. And finally, a word I made up, efficiency. <laughs> toppers averaging 44% from the field and 27 per, from three on the season. They'll need a better than average shooting day. Can't afford a day off like they have in their two losses where they've shot 33%. WKU and Murray State. Happy holidays from Murray, Kentucky. On our simulcast on the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network and ESPN3. It's produced by IMG. It is Hilltopper basketball time in Murray, Kentucky. WKU and Murray State, and we're now going to have a moment of silence for the tragedy that occurred just a couple of days ago. moment of silence for the tragedy in Newton, Connecticut, and uh, what a horrible, horrible tragedy that was. Randy Lee and Hal Schmidt with you here courtside at Murray, Kentucky, 150th meeting between the Hilltoppers and Murray State Racers. And as we mentioned in the open, as head coach Ray Harper leads his team into this matchup against uh, Steve Prohm at Murray State, and what a fabulous start for Steve Prohm. It's just his second year at Murray State. He's coached 41 games and has won 38. The uh, only two coaches in the history of college basketball who have had a better start in wins and losses than Steve Prohm, Bill Hodges. Uh, he won his first 33 games as the head coach at Indiana State. Larry Bird's last year there. And Norman Shepard, back in the 20s, won his first 26 games at North Carolina. Steve Prohm won his first 23 games as head coach last year at Murray State. Also, William Small is on the Murray State coaching staff. He was a WKU assistant from 2003 through 2005. So Coach Small knows a little bit about this rivalry on both sides of the fence. Yes, he does. And uh, Coach Prom, I'm sure very thankful for the hand he was dealt when he, when Coach Kennedy went to Texas A&M and he got delivered a pretty nice team to deal with. As we mentioned, 150th matchup, 97 wins for the tops here this year. Murray State, the better offensive team, averaging about 10 more points per game than WKU. And offensively, they are definitely the better team, a better shooting team, fewer turnovers per game. A lot of that has to do with starting four seniors and a junior and an All-American in point guard Isaiah Cannon. Well, that, that can cure a lot of ills if you've got four seniors and a, uh, and a junior that are in your starting lineup and one of those one of those seniors was an All-American last year as a preseason pick this year. That, that, that can help a lot. But they're a good, solid team. Again, once you get past the first five, six, maybe seven players, they start to go, they start to decline a bit. So let's hope the toppers have an opportunity, if you're a topper fan, to get it into that bench of Murray State. That's the advantage. Depth, even with TJ Price out with an injury, WKU has more depth than Murray State. And so far this year, the Hilltoppers have been a better rebounding team. They're a plus seven. Murray State is a plus three. And WKU, I know that was the concern before the year, is how good of a rebounding team will this Hilltopper team be? They didn't rebound it well at all in the two exhibition games, but 
since the season has tipped off, uh, they've been just outstanding on the boards. And when WKU out rebounds their opponents, uh, the Hilltoppers under Ray Harper have won 16 of those 17 times they've done it. Well, that's just pure D scrappiness there. Uh, another area where the Toppers have struggled at times has been the free throw line. They have not been a good free throw shooting team against in the win against Southern Illinois. They squeaked by and were able to, even with a, a 50 percent free throw shooting percentage in that particular game. So they did better against IUPUI, but they're going to have to hit the free ones tonight and going forward as these games get more critical. South Central Bank now has the exclusive WKU debit card available for you. That's South Central Bank. Thanks so much for joining us here on a Sunday afternoon from Murray, Kentucky. Hill Toppers and her coaching staff of Ray Harper, flanked by Phil Cunningham, Lawrence Brenneman, and David Boyden. WKU and the Road Reds here in this one. Hill Toppers so far on the year, two up and one down. Their one road loss was the season opener in Hattiesburg against Southern Mississippi. And senior Jamal Crook's going to be important to be able to handle this uh, physical play, the up-tempo play for Murray State. It's important for the Hilltoppers to run when they have an advantage, but they do not want to get up and down and race with the racers today. Nope. They're named the racers for a certain reason, and uh, you just don't want to you just don't want to mess with them and get in that kind of game. The Murray State baseball program is known as the Thoroughbreds. All the other teams on campus known as the Racers. As legend goes, the baseball coach did not want to buy new uniforms when they changed their name from the Thoroughbreds to the Racers. They kept those jerseys, and that's 40, 50 years ago, and Murray State is still known as the Thoroughbreds in baseball. It's kind of odd, too, the state of Kentucky is such a horse-rich area <laughs> that you don't have one team that I'm aware of named the Thoroughbreds. There's the tip in back, court one by Ting Cole. The Hilltoppers have it. First, they'll be moving from left to right and are quickly playing man to man as Murray State. Harris along on the left side now to Jamal Crook. Crook with a crouching dribble out of between the circles. Cannon is on him, man on man. He works it to the right and stops. Top of the key to a call, 17 footer, two. He loves that shot. He stuck it in between the eyes of Brandon Garrett. And the big man has given the Hilltoppers a 2 0 lead. WKU has not trailed in a game in 83 minutes. Loaded Daniel Banks up around and up rebound Garrett back up put it around and in wow that was just a determination rebound and put back by Garrett he came flying in got that ball somehow wasn't much of a shot he just hoisted it up towards the iron and got the kind roll and they're coming from behind when at Evans going their last game he had his career game to the hole comes Crook up and in over the shot blocking Daniel with a driving left-handed layup well that was a great drive by Jamal Crook just challenged uh, Daniel's shot blocking ability got it high off the glass. One minute gone by, Hilltoppers up 4-2. Three out front, good. Stacy Wilson, who can really drain it from deep. 6-3 senior puts Murray State in front, 5-4, and we played two minutes and 10 seconds. Here comes Crook front court. First time the Hilltoppers have trailed a game in 84 minutes. Blade, the walkman from Louisville, long range right side, headed to Keita Harris. Harris dribbles it, comes baseline to Fant, dribbled off his foot, it goes out of bounds. It will be out of bounds to WKU. Underneath official, the ball rolled about to his feet, but he deferred to the out official. He could not see whose foot that rolled off of. The out official called it. Hilltoppers will inbound under their basket with 18 seconds on the shot clock. Hilltoppers bring in 6'7 junior or Carl Kamene. He came in and told Ting to call the leave, that he wasn't supposed to tell Ting to leave. He went in for Percy Blade. So Ting stays in the game. Here's a pass out front to Crook. Jamal Crook left to the key to Ting. Down in the corner to Harris on the left side. Brandon back out top. Stop. 17 footer near from the head of the gate. Switch. Hilltoppers up 6'5 with 18.25 to go here in the first half. So when I said the Hilltoppers needed to be effective offensively, I didn't mean 100% shooting, <laughs> but they are 100% out of the gate so far. They've hit their first three shots. The Racers have led the Ohio Valley Conference in scoring defense four years in a row. Here's Cannon, long range outside. A call picks him up. Long bounce pass thrown away. He was trying to find Zay Henderson inside, and he bounced it by the freshman from Monroe, Louisiana. It's a Murray State turnover, and here come the Hilltoppers with a 6-5 lead at 18.06 to play here in their first half. It's not a good bounce pass by Zay Cannon. It was a baseball bounce pass. Those tend to bounce higher and uh, it's harder for the big man underneath to anticipate where that thing's going to be. Harrison half court. Deep down the right side to Jamal. Cannons on him, man on man. 
Cook with a two to one assist to turnover ratio this year. Works it to the top of the key and stops. He's in trouble. As he's falling down, he throws it in the left corner to Harris. He foul on defense. Dribbles hard to his right. Had a knock away by Cannon from behind. Cannon comes out of the pack and lost the ball off the dribble. Out of bounds. And WK will get it back in front court with 17.39 to play in her first half. Well, George Fan has touched the ball twice, put it on the floor twice, and lost it twice. So we're starting to see a little tendency there. The first time it went out of bounds and Hilltoppers were able to maintain, but that time, fortunate that the Hilltoppers were able to maintain as Isaiah Cannon lost it out of bounds. Here's the inbound pass to Harris, the junior out of Oklahoma City. His shot, the shot appears to be coming along now. Had a tough start to his first year on the hill shooting the ball. Down low to Acaro on the right block. Top of the key to Ting for an 18-footer. Shot it short. It was online, but short. Rebounded by Wilson. Half foot Alec comes to Cannon. Stop. Pops the three for the left wing. Missed everything with the board. Pulled down on the other side by Ocaro. He gets it to Harris. Harris was flying front court, and Ray Harper jumped off the bench and gave him the stop sign. Slow it down. Isaiah Cannon probably realizes there are six NBA scouts in the house today, and that was a little jacked up as far as that first shot was concerned. Harris rolls a low to Ocaro. Top of the key to Ting. Ting down a low to Fant just outside the lane on the left side. Backs his way in. Hard move to his right. Hook shot around it off it's batted around and Henderson has it in backcourt for Murray State 1652 to go first half Tinga Cole had inside position on that rebound he did not jump however and wasn't able to control the board sometimes in your 611 you, you don't need to jump to get it but in that case he did he did Cannon has the ball at half court. He's averaging 21 again. He brings it to the left wing against Harris, the Hilltoppers' best on ball defender. Cannon stops, left to the key. Got there by Garrett. Hard dribble drive to the left wing fan. Jump shot. Shot it short. No good. Offensive rebound inside the Murray State. Knocked away and picked up by Ocaro in backcourt. And once again, not wanting to run with Murray State, WK will walk in front court with a 6-5 lead and 16-15 to play in her first half. Crook on the right wing. Over the left to Harris. Shoots a long three. That is no good. Acaro tipped it, did not get it, but Tinga Cole gets it back on the right wing and comes to the baseline. And lobs it back out deep to Crook. We played four minutes, and the Hilltoppers lead Murray State 6 to 5. Crook gets a pick from Fant, but goes the other way. To the foul line, in the lane, dumps a load of Ting. Slammed off! Tremendous pass from Jamal Crook, and that is our Hensley and Thronberry CPA pass of the game. He was able to brush his defender off just a little bit on George Fan at the top of the key. It's only space he needed. Crook was able to get in deep and dump it when the help defense came. WKU 8, Murray State 5. We played four and a half minutes. Wilson long range left side against the Carl. Fakes right, comes up to the wing. Shoots a fall away three. It's on the rim and off. Foul on, re I should say, a baseline rebound by Crook. The Hilltopper point guard brings it down, and he'll walk it across the timeline. On him is Dexter Fields. Splits a double team. Trip to the open court. Knocked down. No foul. Murray State has the ball in backcourt, and then a reach and foul on Ting. It calls. He tried to take it away from Zay Henderson. Well, that's probably a pretty good foul because uh, Cole... Uh, Trying to get that ball. Crook was on the floor, so that definitely Murray was going to have numbers had they been able to outlet that ball. We've reached our first media timeout. Hilltoppers are leading Murray State by the score of 8 to 5 with 15 10 to play in the first half. You're watching and listening to the Hilltopper Sports Satellite Network, produced for ESPN3 by IMG. Randy now back with you with our Bluegrass Cellular Broadcast table seats as the Hilltoppers lead Murray State 8 to 5. Jamal Crook with a nice dish off for a Ting Cole slam dunk that gave the Hilltoppers a three point lead at 8 5. The Hilltoppers have two assists, one turnover to this point. Jamal Crook, the owner of both of those assists, he's going to have to be good in that column today in the scoring cards. Minute Mart is the home of Adeli Sandwiches, Godfather's Pizza, and Cup of Joe Coffee. And here come the Racers front court. WKU leading by three at eight to five when he played five minutes. Kenny and Ebo in for WKU, the post player wearing number zero. Here's Cannon attacking the hole, dribbling around a couple of defenders and went from right to left and laid it in with the left hand. He just kept probing the defense, trying to search for an opening, found it, and scored. Well, the opening came when Kenny and Ebo didn't move his feet. He tried to reach in and poke it away from him, didn't move his feet to get in front of him. You can't do that with Isaiah Cannon. He took it straight to the glass. 14-40 left first half. Hilltoppers eight, racers seven. Low to Anibo, back to the basket. Bangs in on Henderson, puts up a shot, and it's around off the back of the iron and in. An aggressive move for Kenny and Ebo, who only averages two points a game. Yeah, not real offensive-minded, but he felt like he could take, take it to 
to the hole off the dribble and did so. 10-7, WKU lead. Lob it low outside the lane to Garrett. Turn around, left-handed jumper over Nebo. Off the iron two times, rebounded by Daniel. Daniel back up, banked it around, but out. Snatching the ball off the rim is big man George Spann for WKU. Here's Casball front court, baseline drive, bumped and fouled by Wilson of Murray State. Kevin Kaspar, his first action of the day, the 6'1 sophomore guard from Turkey, coming off a game where he made three threes. He had been in a shooting slump before he made three threes in Hilltoppers' last game, a blowout win over IUPUI. Well, he's one of the Hilltoppers that I said are better shooters than they've shown early. He's got a great stroke, very energetic. It would be important for him to be able to find that range this season. Crook spins his way toward the top of the key and stops. Deep behind him now to Caspar. Wilson guarding Caspar closely. Caspar dribbling to the right wing. Cut off. Right at the key to Harris. He squares up on the defense from Fields. He brings it out front. They double team him. He drags it left to the key with 10 on the shot clock. Deep on the wing to Crook. Rising up for a jumper. And airballed it. Rebounded by Garrett. Garrett clears it for Murray State. Here comes Cannon across the timeline. Cannon at the top of the key, pops the three. On the rim and off. Anibo rebounding for WKU. Cannon is cold from the outside early on. And now guard Caspar walks in front towards the top of the key. He's in the key area, leans in, dumps it low to Fan. A great pass, and George missed his hook shot. Shot it over the rim. Point blank, too. George had a good look. It wasn't really challenged by the defense. He shot it too hard. Murray State wasn't ready for Fan to even get the ball. It was a pretty good pass from Caspar. Left wing three by Fields. Good. Dexter Fields, who has made 17 out of 44 this year, hits a three, and the game is tied at 10 with 12.50 to play first half. There's a good catch and shoot by Fields. Crook left in the key at half court, looking for help. Throws it behind him to Harris, deep on the wing. Murray State comes out the double. Harris now Daniel backs away. Harris to the left wing. Low to Anibal, had it batted away. Stolen by Wilson. Here's Wilson down the middle. Wilson to the foul line in the lane. Puts it up on the run and misses it. Rebounded to backcourt by Caspar. Kevin now running. Hill toppers with numbers. Kevin fouled in the backcourt as he brings it across the timeline by Murray State. Well, Coach Harper said they were going to be selective when they pushed the ball up, and that time he realized that a couple of Murray players were down on defense, and he was really, really uh, causing, forcing Kevin, or urging Kevin Caspar to force that ball up. Increase the pace in that possession. It was a reach and foul on Brandon Garrett. The center for Murray State picks up his first foul. When the Hilltoppers get a rebound, they take a quick glance at the bench today to see what Ray would like for them to do. They want to run it after a rebound or do they want to walk it? That time they wanted to run it. Caspar fall back jumper on the wing, missed it. And it's pulled down by Wilson. Caspar went for a steal in backcourt and fouled Wilson. Boy, that's going to get it. He's going to get a near chewing from Coach Harper on that play. First of all, he forced the shot. It was not a good shot. He was off balance. It was early in the shot clock. That's not what he wants. And then he made a, a foul 45 feet from the basket. 10-10 tie, Murray State hasn't led it yet as Jeffrey Moss throws it in, a six foot four freshman from Madison, Alabama. He was the fourth rated senior in the state of Alabama and Steve Crome and his staff went in there and recruited him to Murray State. Cannon works the ball up and down, gives it to Wilson just in front of us here courtside. He works it one-on-one -on -one against Caspar. 10-10 tie, left to right, dribble to the foul in the lane, off balance, eight footer and it rolls in. Five points for Wilson, and Murray State leads it 12 to 10. Yeah, Wilson's played hard. A good, buck, a good bucket for him. He's calling for reserves. Coach Prome, he needs a breather. Caspar up the right sideline. Kevin Beers to the middle. Cannons on him, man on man. Bounce pass right wing to Blade. Blade deep to Harris. Everything in the perimeter right now. He runs his man into a call screen. Goes left wing to Caspar for a three. Airballed it. Great rebound, though, by Akamane on the baseline. They look past the blade for a three. Shot it short. Pulled down and backward by Murray State's Henderson. Well, that right. shot by Blade looked good. It was dead on, just a little bit short off the front iron. Gadden walks it front court against Caspar. Murray State with a 12-10 lead, and we played nine minutes. He brings it from right to left against Caspar. To the top of the key. Well, hesitation, step back, prayer from the foul line, in and out, traveling violation on Cannon before the shot. And we've reached immediate timeout. We've played nine first half minutes, and Murray State leads the Hilltoppers 12 to 10 on our simulcast of WKU Hilltopper Basketball, the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network and ESPN3. It's produced today by IMG.
Your John Deere dealer in Bowling Green, Glasgow, Hardensburg, and Owensboro is Wright Implements. You'll never go wrong with Wright. Hilltopper started off, Randy, shooting the ball very well, hit four of their first seven shots. However, they've only hit one of their next six shots, shooting 38%, same percentage as Murray, 38.5. Both teams five of 13 from the field. Each team has eight rebounds. Each team has two turnovers. The difference, Murray State has made two of four threes. WK has missed all four. Crook brings it front court right wing. Jump pass deep on the right side. Now to Ting to call. Hands it back to Crook. Long range right side. Jamal penetrating out front. Deep on the right to Ting. Fake the jumper. Comes baseline. 12 footer. Up and in. Sweet wow. Move. Six points for Ting. A call. A great ball and head fake. And not too many six foot 11 centers in college basketball can make a move like that and score it. Yeah, and keep their feet still. They have a tendency to shuffle their feet, but he took one big dribble. And for him, that's a monster step to the right. He kissed it off the glass from about 15. But Cole now has scored six points. 12-12 tie. Deep in the corner, Cannon launching it. Made it over Harris, who was crowding him. And now a whistle. Turn the net inside okay. out. Official stopped it to pull it back out. Here in Murray, they use those long nets. And uh, sometimes those long shots have a tendency to turn it inside out. It stops play. Gives them an advantage in that case to... Uh, to get back and get their defense set up, but the Hilltoppers aren't playing at a high, high rate of speed anyway. 15-12 following the cannon, three-point shot. Caspar long range right side. Caspar now in between the circles. Caspar to the top of the key, behind him to Harris. Takes a shot, moves to his left and forces a jumper. Good! Holy moly! A forced perimeter jumper from Brandon Harris, who has been a cold shooter at the outset of the season, and he ties the game at 15. And the toppers have really not gotten an uncontested or an open look from three yet. That one was heavily contested, but Harris was able to find the range and turn that net inside out. 9.42 to go, first half tied at 15. We've had four ties and three lead changes. Post-up pass comes into Daniel. He's fouled from behind by Ocaro Okamane, the six foot seven junior out of Miami, Florida for WKU. And Murray State will get the ball back as the car was fighting for position, tried to come around the backside and steal the ball from Daniel. He was active defensively. He was telling the official as he was going off the court that he felt like Daniel was hooking him. So official nodded. He said he will keep an eye on that. Here comes the inbounds pass deep in the corner to Fields with the baseline drive. His pass throwing was tipped. Daniel gets it back, comes in off balance, steps it down a load of field. Six footer shot up short. Fan rebounding for WKU. Quick outlet to Harris. Harris up the right sideline of the tie game. Brandon headed a key to fans. George with a dribble, crossing over against Daniel into the lane, out of control, forcing up a jump shot in the paint and made it over Daniel. Well, George has showed that little, shown that little spin move off the dribble, and that was a nice one. It was into heavy traffic, however, but somehow was able to get the ball up through the traffic and score. Toppers up 17-15, low to Daniel, muscles the ball up, it's good, he's fouled, and it counts. Dan hit him low, Tinga Cole fouled him up high, we'll no, see the foul is on. It's on George. First two points for Ed Daniel, who's averaging 17 a game. Jamal Crook exiting. They're trying to just give Crook minutes of rest here and there. He checks out. That was on Fant, his first. Tinga Cole has one as well. Daniel's free throw is good. And Murray State back in front on an old-fashioned three-point play. It is 18-17, and Ed Daniel has scored three points. Five ties, four lead changes over the game's first 11 minutes. And here comes Caspar. The Hilltoppers are eight up and two down, and Murray State is seven and one. Caspar leads in between the circles to Harris. A long three, and he missed everything with the board. Garrett rebounding, now to Cannon. Cannon down the left sideline, no look pass in the corner for a three-point jump shot. That's perfect from Jeffrey Moss. He is 5 of 13 this year on threes. And now Murray State has their biggest lead of four with 8.40 left, 21-17. Low to Fant in the paint, pushed and fouled from behind as he took the pass. And that'll be on Murray State's Zay Henderson. Three team fouls on the racers. Fan had some room to operate with down and low that time, and he was fouled on the drive. Here's Blade, Hanson behind him to Caspar. The call top of the key. Murray State scored the last six points of the game. Bouncing it low to Fant, makes a catch on Henderson to come back to double. Comes in on Henderson, spins to the baseline, puts it up, no good. Slam dunk rebound, Ting 
Young, a call. Bonala scored eight. Well, Ting's been very active inside. That was a nice follow by him. He, George rolled it off the front of the rim, but Ting was there to clean it up. Cannon missing it three from out front. The ball at the top of the iron, then the top of the board, and it's rebounded by WKU's Harris. Here's Harris front court left wing. Harris stopping, looking low to Ting, couldn't get it in. Brand trying to find somebody open, coming out deep to help him out is Kevin Caspar. Cole's high point game this year's 14. He's already scored eight. Caspar out front, 27-footer. They hit him on the arm. No, they did not. It's an air ball. He missed it by three feet. Coach Harper asks, what are you doing? Furrowed brow, very quizzical look. Doesn't understand that shot. Media break. Murray State leading the Hilltoppers by two points at 21-19 with seven minutes and 44 seconds left on our simulcast of WKU Hilltopper men's basketball. The Hilltopper IMG Sports Network and ESPN3. It's produced by IMG, and this is Hilltopper basketball. Murray State leading WKU 21-19 with 7.44 left to go in this first half. Tinga Cole leading the Hilltoppers with eight points. And Stacy Wilson and Isaiah Cannon each have scored five. WKU without the services of their leading scorer today, TJ Price with a high ankle sprain. We're looking at Price now in our simulcast. The sophomore from Louisiana is averaging 17 points per ball game. Uh, he wanted to play today. Ray Harper held him out. Hilltoppers play at VCU on Tuesday. And he may not play in that game as well. And our injury update is brought to you by the Western Kentucky Orthopedic and Neurosurgical Associate Group. When you have an injury, nowhere to go. Races in the half court. Cannon left to the key. Into the foul lane. Throws it in the corner for a three-point shot. And it's good. Dexter Fields. And that now is 5-3 for Murray State. They shoot 37% from behind the line this year. But they're killing it right now from down and deep. And it's 24-19 racers nearing the seven-minute mark of the first half. Harrison half court, top of the key, behind him now to Crook. Crook, baseline left to Anibo, backs his way in on the smaller field, he's in the lane, all the way on the basket, baseline right to a call, fake Daniel out of his shoes, missed the 10-foot baseline jump shot, and it's pulled down by Murray State Fields. Fields to Cannon, Cannon front court, left wing. Head high dribble, out top the Fields, launching a top of the key three. No good, a call up high for a hilltop, a rebound. It was knocked away, and then Harris scoops it up for WKU. Harris the other way, top of the key. Left side, Fant, make the jumper. Daniel came out, got a charge, and Fant has now picked up two fouls as he ran into Ed Daniel. Well, those, those types of turnovers right there just kill you. You're trying to keep this game close. Murray's hot from three. Uh, they're on a 9-2 to two run over the last two minutes. You need some offense. The last thing you want to do is try to force something like that and run over a defender and get called turn the ball over and give it back to him to score again. Murray State has made five of eight threes in this game and lead it 24-19. Here come the racers and Cannon will walk at front court with 6.28 to play in the first half. Crossing over, right at a key against Harris. Couldn't get by Brandon. Comes in the middle of the field to transfer from UAB. Left side, three was faked by Wilson. Comes into the lane. Fingertip roll, no good, but a blocking foul on Hilltopper big man Kenny Anibo. First foul on an Abo. Ray Harper on the court, bending over in anguish after that foul call. He thought it was a charge. Yeah, his face is red and his brow furrowed, and he is not happy with the call at all. I'd have to agree with him. Nebo was outside the half moon underneath the basket. May have leaned in a little. That certainly could have gone either way as Stacy Wilson heads to the free throw line. Quite a story regarding Wilson. He was the fifth guard on last year's 31 and 2 Murray State team that made the Sweet 16. This year he starts and he averages 17 again. He scored five points in this one. He's a 65% free throw shooter. And that's no good. Races as a team shoot 67%. And you don't normally see really good teams house shoot fewer free throws than their opponents. Murray State has. Their opponents have shot six more free throws during the year than Murray State has. Wilson hits the second free throw, and the racers now up six over the Hilltoppers. 25-19 to 6-17 to play in the first half. Toppers will be a little more deliberate in the half court this possession. Brandon Harris brings it across the timeline. Crouching dribble, left corner crook, baseline drive coming down. 
Shelves it low to Anibo and banks it in. What a feed from Crook. I don't even know that Anibo thought he was going to give it up. Well, he didn't catch it cleanly, but he was able to get a hold of it and uh, put it in once he did catch. Gaspar knocked the ball away after the basket. It's 25-21, but Wilson retrieves it on the left baseline. Throws it alone, and Gaspar intercepted that one. Down the left sideline to Harris, a two-on-one. Pulls up for a three. In and out, look good, didn't go. Anibo bumped Daniel away from the basket, gave it to Crook, and he laid it in. A little, mm, excuse me, little elbow from Kenny Anibo. Bring up the Hilltoppers for a layup. A little chicken wing, and Jamal Crook's a uh, little gimpy getting back down the court. WKU with a lot of injuries on this team, and right now Crook is limping. Murray State's lead it to 25-23, 5-20 left. Cannon had it knocked away by Harris. Cannon gets it back in the left wing. Now Cannon brings it back out to half court. Cannon averaging 21 a game. He's scored five so far. He'll go one-on-one -on -one against Harris. Between the legs twice. Crossing over. Foul line in the paint. Running one-hander. No good. Daniel rebounds back up. No good. Foul on WKU. Well, that's a great move by Cannon. Good one-on-one -on -one move, but he's two of seven from the field right now. That little running floater just wouldn't go down for him. Second foul on Kenny and Nebo for the Hilltoppers. Ed Daniel to the free throw line. He's averaging 12 rebounds a game. He has put together six consecutive games of more than 10 points and more than 10 rebounds. Six straight double-doubles. The last time that has happened at Murray State, 1982. His free throw is no good. He's been quiet offensively, scoring just three, but he has three boards. Percy Blade comes in, Jamal Crook is out, so Brandon Harris and Kevin Caspar will now run the point guard spot for WKU. And uh, Akaro Akumani is back in, and Kenny Anibo is out. Murray State by two, 25-23. The Racers have won 38 of their last 41 games. WKU's won 15 of their last 18. Daniel hits a second free throw, and the Racers are up by three. 26-23, just under five minutes to go in the half. Harris had it poked away from behind, but he gets it back, seated in the lane. Throws it up to Casper, top of the key. The right wing, a call hands it back to Harris. Wilson trying to poke the ball away in a tight man-to-man -man defense. Comes in lane on Daniel, puts up the shot, and he charged. So Daniel has drawn a charge foul on Fant, and he's now drawn a charge foul on Harris. And for a player like Daniel who blocks so many shots, he's drawing charges today rather than getting the block shot. Yeah, Coach Harper still don't have to do that call either. He, he's shaking his head, talking to the same official that he's had some issues with before. And uh, a little bit of a flop there by Daniel, in my opinion. Here comes C.J. Ford. First time C.J.'s played. A freshman from Fayetteville, North Carolina. For those who are simulcast, he wears number 11. Fields deep on the right wing, and now Ford gets it back out top against Caspar. Comes left corner to Fields with a baseline drive. Under the bucket, puts up the shot. He's fouled by Ocaro Alcamene. He'll shoot a pair as he missed the shot. Coach Harper felt one of the keys in this game for a Hilltopper upset win would be to get Murray State in foul trouble. WKU has a deeper bench, but so far the Hilltoppers have been the team committing the fouls. Nine team fouls, and the Racers only have three. Yeah, the Hilltoppers have not been to the line yet. Murray is shooting their sixth and seventh free throws right here. Fields is a player who does not attempt a lot of free throws, mostly a perimeter shooter. That's only his third foul shot this year. He's two for three as he makes that when it's 27-23. He's a 6'2 junior from Orlando who transferred from UAB. WKU up by four. I should say uh, Murray State up by four, 27-23. Fields eyes it, flies it. In and out. A call with a hilltop a rebound. Third rebound for the big man. Here's Caspar front court, crowded by Wilson. Stops, way out high to a call against Daniel. Murray stayed in a man-to-man, soft bounce pass, headed a key to Harris. Gets a pick from Ting, goes to the right side and stops. Baseline to Blade, he's cut off, he brings it back with a pass on the wing to Harris. Here in the four-minute mark of the first half, shot clock is down to 10. Harris to the top of the key, stops, around to the right wing to a call for 17-footer. Swing! Ting a call, has scored 10. And with 3.50 to go in the first half, the Murray State lead it to 27-25. Garrett against Ting. Had a shot blocked by a call. Brought down by Strain and a foul on Garrett. So Garrett had a shot blocked by a call and then fouls after he tried to get the ball back. We have immediate timeout. Three minutes, 46 seconds left, first half. Murray State 27, WKU 25. 
on our simulcast of WKU Hilltopper Basketball, the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network and ESPN3. It's produced this afternoon by IMG. The Racers lead over the Hilltoppers down to two. It was six at 25-19. This game has had five ties and four lead changes. Right now, WKU trailing 27-25 with 3.46 left in the first half. And it's Hilltopper basketball and backcourt following the block shot from Ting Nicole and the frustration foul on Brandon Garretts. He's Coach Prom on the bench for Murray State. Before that, you saw Ray Harper, and Ray Harper makes no promises about the number of wins his team is going to be able to secure, but he does promise they're going to play hard every night. Certainly showing that here this afternoon at Murray. Gaspar deep on the right to Harrison, half court against the Racers' man-to-man -man defense. Harris double team, baseline right to Ting, knocked away by Daniel. Cole got it back and fires it to Green for a 15-footer. Go! Perfect pass from Ting Nicole, who has just been outstanding today on five of seven shooting. That pass, some rebounds, and a block shot or two. I'm sure Ting Nicole is getting the eye of the NBA scouts that are in the arena today at seven foot, six eleven, whatever, and having the type of game he is. He's going to get some attention from somebody. 27 27 tie, nearing the three minute mark in the first half. Handling the ball between the circles is Moss, the freshman. Dribbles to the top of the key against Drain. Gives it behind him to Cannon, deep in the left wing against Harris. Down in the corner, open three. Moss in the air. He misses that one, made one early from there. Garrett though, rebounded the ball, takes it up on Tang, threw it up wildly and missed it. It's off of Daniel of Murray State and out of bounds. And WKU will have the ball in backcourt with a chance to take the lead. Well, it's a heck of a battle. I tell you what, Murray and WKU going after it hard now. Tang Cole is down, holding his right shin or knee you get a look at it here on the replay landed kind of hard on that yeah. that lay landed awkwardly wku's backup center alex rostov did not practice on friday he has injured his knee i don't know if rostov can play at all now rostov was ready to come off the bench as we were looking at coach ray harper so we'll see if alex is able to come in and play with the way Tinga Cole has been playing, this is certainly a tough injury for the Siltopper team that's without T.J. Price now. George Fant playing with an injured knee. Akaro Kamene has missed time with a sprained ankle. And now Tinga Cole is down with two minutes and 47 seconds left to play in his first half. Cole, I'm sorry, a call's being tended to by trainer Mike Gaddy, who certainly earned his pay this year, and uh, team physician Dave Richards. Taking a look at that right leg, straighten it out, and seeing if it's in that. Seems to be looking up towards the, the knee, the right knee of Tinga Cole. Tinga Cole's block shot minutes ago now makes him a 10th all time in Hilltopper block shot history. He has tied Lee Lampley, who was a six foot six jumping jack out of Chicago in those 1997 through 2000 teams. He was a, a powerful player with wide shoulders. Uh, and no comparison really to the physique of Ting Nicole, who's uh, so much taller than Lee and skinnier. So you're looking at the knee and shin of Ting Nicole. The game is tied at 27. Two minutes and 47 seconds are left in our first half. I'd like to let you know about Western Kentucky Heart and Lung. They provide professional, compassionate, and caring service. Uh, they've helped to call up, and uh, he's standing, putting pressure on that right leg. But they were, uh, Coach Richards was looking at the um, that right knee, testing the flexibility and stability of it. Ting able to walk off under his own power, but with a very discernible limp. See if he's able to get back in. Hilltopper certainly would miss him if he's not able to get back in there. And Alex Rostow, for those of you on our simulcast, he wears number 20. He is a freshman from Latvia. He's rarely played this year. Rose Stove comes in. He's averaging three points a game. Has not played in two of the last three games, and he's missed some practice lately because of a knee injury. Here's Harris, front court, tie game. Brandon, left wing dribble, stopping. Down and low, ball batted away. He goes out of bounds, and Murray State will get it back on a hilltopper turnover. That is only WKU's fifth turnover. Murray State forces a lot of turnovers. And Daniel will flip it in backcourt to Isaiah Cannon with two and a half minutes to go in his first half. Cannon brings it front court for the Racers. Gaspar greets him with man to man defense. He works it to the right side, stumbled a little bit, comes back to the top of the key, leaves it deep now to Wilson against Blade. 
He looks inside to Daniel, did, did not make the pass, comes to the baseline, leans in on Percy, puts up a shot, and a charge foul on Wilson. By the Hilltopper coaching staff and players up off the bench, really cheering that, uh, cheering that drawn foul. You see Drain come over from the weak side and draw that. Really, Drain and Blade both fell down. I really don't know who would be credited for drawing the charge. Maybe you can uh, do it like in football where two players combined for a quarterback sack, they get a half a sack, Hal. <laughs> that was a half of an offensive charge draw, but uh, nonetheless, it looked like a bowling ball coming in there. And the official that Coach Harper had been working on so much was the one who made the call. So maybe that politicking over there paid some dividends for Coach Ray Harper. Western Kentucky University's last lead was at 17-15, just past the 10-minute mark. They come here with the ball during the two-minute mark in a tie game at 27. Caspar out of the perimeter against Cannon. Cannon reached in and fouled him. That is the first foul on Isaiah Cannon, last year's Ohio Valley Conference Player of the Year. He's 11th all-time in points scored in Murray State history, the senior from Biloxi, Mississippi. 16 fouls on Murray State. The next one sends WKU to the free throw line. The Hilltoppers has a team that committed nine fouls. Harris now has the ball at half court. Third time now, WK has had the ball, the chance to take the lead. Caspar on the right wing, out top to Rosto. Rosto dribbles it right to left, stops, twisting and turning, ball batted away. Retrieved by Green, outside the lane, right side. Puts up a shot from the baseline and missed it. He missed the tip and Garrett retrieves it for Murray State. Lobs it front court to Fields on the left wing, behind him to Cannon. Cannon surveys his teammates in the half court and throws a one-handed bounce pass out of between the circles to Moss. Shot clock at 20. Cannon in the right corner makes the catch. Drain comes out and guards him. Now he goes by Drain to the baseline for a flip shot. No, and alley-oop to Daniel and he caught it and laid it in. So it was a pass, not a shot. Daniel caught the alley-oop. Timeout, WKU and Murray State's back in front, 29-27 with a minute 24 to go in the first half. And Coach Harper giving it to Rostov right now. He uh, took the ball off the dribble and lost the ball down there in their previous Hilltopper possession. Coach Harper wouldn't, wasn't happy with that game like this. And a freshman coming in just doesn't realize the physicality of it and, and what's going on. Last thing he wants his freshman to do is put that thing on the floor at the top of the key and try to get into the paint. So it's a two-point Murray State lead, 29-27. Also like to remind you about the two big days when the Hilltoppers come back home to Diddle Arena after Christmas, Thursday night, December 27th at 7 o'clock. Legendary Hilltopper player, head coach, and later athletic director John Oldham will be there. The court at Fiddle Arena will be known as John Oldham Court. And that ceremony is Thursday, December 27th. Saturday, December 29th, he'll top her All-American when days gone by. Bobby Rasco will have his jersey retired. Here's Harris front court, and it's Dallow to Tinga Call, who's back in. That's the good news, and the last time we saw Tinga Call, he was on his back, and he's on his back again as he was knocked down trying to post up, and that'll send Tinga Call to the free throw line for a one plus one. That foul was on Moss. McCall this year, only a 58% free throw shooter. He has a better stroke than that. He has scored 10 to lead everyone in scoring so far in the first half. 6'11", senior from South Sudan. Murray State 29, WKU 27, and a game which has seen four lead changes and six first-half ties. Assistant WKU coach David Boyden over on one knee in front of Alex Rostov, uh, giving him a little coaching, a little update on the messages that uh, Coach Harper's trying to get through to these guys. Where Ting fell down, there's some sweat, so they are wiping up the perspiration from Tingu Call. Someone of 6'11 that sometimes takes more than one towel. <laughs> this is a Cole's first free throw. In fact, it's WKU's first free throw of the game, and he makes it. It's 29 28, racers by one point here on this Saturday afternoon. The um, advertising sales opportunity to get bounty. On the list, bounty quicker picker up or all the sweat breaks do we have in a basketball game? Ting second free throw rims in and out to so the racers up one 29 28 some great inside passing They go from one side of the lane from Garrett to the other side to Daniel and he lays it in Racers leading 31 28 55 seconds left first half 
Here comes Harris, a junior college recruit. Crouch and Gibble coming front court about a 30-footer from out front, and he misses it. Drain, though, tipped the ball and got it back on the right baseline. Goes deep to Harris, right at the key. Hilltoppers have 32 on the shot clock and 41 on the game clock. Harris out front between the circles. Left wing, underhanded low to Ting, one dribble. Up over Daniel with a jump shot in the paint, missed it hard. Pulled down by the races that can hold for one shot. Here comes Cannon. The Hilltoppers playing the last couple of minutes this half without Jamal Crook. Foul inside. Daniel and Drain are fighting for position, and I believe the foul is on Stefan Drain of WKU. That will send Daniel to the free throw line. He has made two of three, and that's team foul 10. So Daniel, the senior from Birmingham, Alabama, will shoot a pair with 23 seconds left in his first half, and the racer's up by three, 31-28. And he makes it. 32-28. And Daniel with that throwback look in terms of the hairstyle from the 70s, shoots again and makes. I remember that 23, well. 28. What's that? I said I remember that hairstyle well. Here comes Harris front court, 15 seconds left. Crowd standing as one as the Hilltoppers look for the last shot. Harris at half court against Fields. Nine seconds to play, first half. Don't wait too long. Seven seconds up is still at half court. To the wing with five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, trying to penetrate into a double team. Had it knocked down, right back in his face. And Murray State goes in up by five. Well, not a good look. I think uh, Hilltoppers waited just a little bit too long to get a look, get that play into action. In a game that saw six first half ties and four lead changes, Murray State goes into the locker room up by five and a half by the score of 33 to 28. This is a simulcast of WKU Hilltopper men's basketball, the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network and ESPN3. It's produced by IMG. This is Hilltopper basketball. Welcome back to the CFSB Center in Murray, Kentucky, where our halftime show is being presented by Farmer-owned Prairie Farms. The host racers have halftime lead 33 to 28 in this one over the Hilltoppers, and we'll be right back with more right after this. You're watching the Hilltopper Sports Satellite Network, produced by IMG for ESPN3. Welcome back to halftime here at Murray, where the Racers have the five-point halftime lead on the Hilltoppers, 33-28. to 28. Hilltoppers have shot 13 of 30 from the field, 43%, only one of nine from long range, and only one of two at the free throw line. Murray, on the other hand, 11 of 26 from the field, 43%, five of 10 at the free throw, or from long range, excuse me, and six of nine at the free throw line. Rebounds nearly even. Hilltoppers up 17 to 16 in there. Both teams taking good care of the basketball. M Murray with four turnovers, Hilltoppers with five. Thanks so much for joining us for our halftime show presented by Farmer-Owned Prairie Farms, and we'll be right back with Second of Action right after this. You're watching the Hilltopper Sports Satellite Network produced by IMG for ESPN3. Welcome back to our simulcast of WKU basketball, Randy and Howe with you from the Bluegrass Cellular Press Row, courtside in Murray, Kentucky. As the Hilltoppers and Racers go at it for the 150th time. And right now, Murray State leads it by five. And we're underway in the second half. And Cannon brings it front court on the right wing to field. Now back to Cannon. WK opening up on a man-to-man. Here's Garrett, right to left dribble. He's left-handed, he laid it in. Took it from the right side of the court, went all the way to the left, and I think uh, Tinga Cole forgot he was left-handed. Well, uh, Cole uh, gave him all the room that he wanted out on the wing, dared him to shoot, but uh, you would think that he'd be ready to stop the dribble, and he did not. Took it all the way to the right. But Cole shoots a three from the right. Good! Tinga Cole with 14 points, and he's three of seven this year from downtown. So he makes up for the miscue on defense and buries a three, and 40 seconds into the the half Murray State's lead at 4 35 31. Uh, announcers may look at that as making up for a, a silly play defensively, but I don't think coaches no, do. I think you're right. The call has tied his season high with 14 points here this afternoon. 35 31 racers. Here is Cannon, top of the key, staying with him as Harris. Low to Daniel and Fant goes right into his right for a hook shot in the paint off the back of the iron, and the call grabs his fourth rebound. The call now to Blake. Blaine hands it off to Crook, and Crook is not playing at 100% today. He is 
injured a, a leg or a foot in the first half as he's limping around. And George Fan has been knocked to the floor by Brandon Garrett of Murray State. So Garrett has a foul, and that is his second. Actually, it's on Ed Daniel, I'm sorry, and Ed Daniel has two fouls. Tinga Cole wearing a little sleeve on his right knee. That was the one that he injured. And something from the scrum earlier in the first half went out for a few minutes, came back in. George Fant, who is to the right of Ting Nicole, has a uh, much larger brace on his left knee. He's been battling that injury since almost the very beginning of the season. And uh, of course, Fant would need a larger brace. His leg's about twice as wide as Ting Nicole's. So yes, you get form-fitting braces too. <laughs> Here's the inbounds pass from Crook on the baseline. Down the left corner to Harris. Brandon looking low to George, drops it into him. Daniel for the steal, didn't get it. Fat caught it, and foul from behind. Daniel fouling. That went up quickly, and Daniel fouled him. And now Ed Daniel, star post player for the Racers, has three fouls. That was good defense on Daniel, though. He was playing George off his right shoulder. When the pass came to his open arm, the left, he quickly came around him, and, and uh, once Fan caught on the baseline, he looked like he had an open layup, but uh, Daniel recovered quickly and challenged that shot. Fouled him in the process, but good active feet in the post defense for Ed Daniel. Fant cerebral rolls off the rim. Fant has only scored two points today. Six is his uh, low point game this year, and that's a game he only played 16 minutes in over in Cancun against DePaul. That's when he injured his knee. He's looking for his third point. Daniel, the sixth leading shot blocker in racer history, and Fant has missed two free throws. Here come the racers, up 490 seconds into it. Wilson takes it to the hole, and he's fouled as he caught the ball on the right baseline, and Blade fouled him. So Wilson goes back to the free throw line for two. Murray State's made six of nine free throws. Neil Toppers, one make and three misses. Actually, that foul may have been on Crook. Nope, it's on Blade. First foul on Blade, and here is Wilson to the free throw line. He went two for four in the first half. He was just two for, he was just uh, two of ten in the last couple of games. WKU Lady Hilltoppers win again uh, today. The Lady Tops uh, home win over Southeastern Missouri State University. What a turnaround they've had in their year. That free throw bends out and went right back in. That game was close at the half, but they Lady Toppers end up winning that one 60 to 46. Wilson has scored seven. He averages 17. Murray stayed by five. He shoots and misses. And there is a George Fant rebound. Racers 36, Hilltoppers 31, 18-24 to play, second half. Crook across the timeline, it gets Cannon. She follows that protective dribble with the left hand, now crosses over on Cannon, comes out of between the circles, leaves it left to the key to Fant. George to his right with the dribble in the lane, in the corner for a Tinga Colt jump shot. It is off the iron, rebounded up high by Harris. Brandon back up, around and off, tip dry, Ting off the iron, no! Murray State with the rebound, it's a three on one. Right side, Cannon pulls up for a three on a three on one and made it on the right way. Well, the Hilltoppers were crashing the boards there, had multiple opportunities to get the put back. And they were pushed in close underneath the basket. And when that rebound came out, Murray had numbers right off the bat, three on one. And they finished it with a three-pointer by Cannon. Racers 39, Hilltoppers 31, 17, 35 left. Laid long range right side, bumped by Wilson off the dribble. Hanson behind him now to Harris. Shot clock is at 10 as Harris moves it from left to right. He's on the right wing. He's on the right baseline. He stops. Right wing Ting down a load of Fant. Went right around Henderson. Banked it up and in. Well, that was bad post defense by Henderson that time. Once Fant caught inside, Henderson kind of rolled off of him and uh, turned his back to him. George had pretty much an uncontested layup there. Race is 39. Hilltoppers 33. We played three second half minutes. Fields long range right side behind the three point line. Deep at half court to Wilson. Blows by Bladen for lane. Fingertip roll, good. Ting had called, backed up, feeling maybe, maybe he would make a pass. He didn't, and he flipped it up and in, and the racer lead is at 8, 41-33. 16.50 to go, second half. Uh, Cole played a little game of chicken there and lost. Crook, top of the key, Harris. Right wing, Nicole, shoots again. No. Brought down by Cannon. Racers are running. This is their game. They're averaging 80 points a game. Leaves it low in the block. Garrett. Left-handed hook shot, low on the iron, and Fant with a rebound after a good blockout. The toppers need a need a score. They've been quick on the trigger the last couple of possessions. They need to get a good look. Lava low to Blade, Percy in the paint, put it up. It's good. It's about it. Counts. 
He caught it on the left side of the rim, went up with his left hand, put it in off the window, and he was fouled. And the racer lead is cut to six at 41-35. Good but pass that, from Brandon Harris. Yeah, it was a really good pass, good finish by Percy Blade. That's just what the doctor ordered. He was able to use that left hand, fend the defender off with his right hand, but use that left hand to kiss it off the glass and went down for him. He gets a chance for three. He hit both of his free throws in that last game against IUPUI last week. Freshman Zay Henderson with a foul. Here's Percy Blade at a free throw line, the six foot four freshman from Louisville Eastern High School. Jamal Crook to the bench. He's still gimpy on that leg, Randy, that he had a little injury in the first half, and he's still limping from that. Blade rolls it in. It's a five point Murray State lead. So you have a limping Crook, and TJ Price is in playing today. Tinga Call was banged up a little bit. He went out in the first half, but he's back in. Alex Rostos playing through a knee injury. Picaro Kamene coming back from an ankle sprain. It's like a mash unit. Cannon half court, dribbles it to his right on the wing against Kenny and Ebo. Harris caught up with him, and then he crosses over to the baseline for fall away 14 foot, and he misses it, and Ebo's right there to snatch it for the Hilltoppers. And Ebo's played well today. Yes, he has. Played very much within his abilities. Harris right at a key jumper off the dribble. No good. Rebound and drain back up around. And in. It roulette wheeled and stayed in there. For a good offensive effort by Stefan Drain. Able to get two back for the Hilltoppers. Pulls this one back to within three. Hilltoppers have scored five in a row. 15.45 to play second half. Murray State 41, WKU 38. Drain off the bench with four points this afternoon. Cannon fouled off the dribble as he took it from right to left on the left wing. We have a media timeout with uh, WKU now down by three. 15.39 to play in our second half. Murray State 41, Hilltoppers 38. On our simulcast of WKU Hilltopper basketball, the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network and ESPN3. It's produced by IMG. The Hilltoppers have brought some fans with them today from uh, the Bowling Green area and maybe some alums and fans are living over here in the Land of the Lake area. Murray State leading by 341-38. JBK Network Consulting and Cisco Systems have long been partners with Hilltopper Country. They serve Sassable, Kentucky since 1992. Now work with companies all over the United States. JBK Network Consulting, they are IP everything. Kevin Kaspar back into the Hilltopper lineup. He had a frustrating first half, forced some jump shots. He's now back in, and Jamal Crook is out. So Crook has picked up a first half injury, staying in the game, trying to battle through. Garrett in the paint for a hook shot and scored it from about 10 feet away. Pull up down. 43-38, racers by five. They score off the inbounds play. Harrison now play point guard with Crook out. Harris dribbles it to the left wing. Brings it back out top. That one pass to Acaro. Squares up and then leaves it behind him on the wing to Caspar. Murray State staying in a man to man. Wilson's on Caspar. Amiibo comes and sets a pick. He dribbles out. Henderson picked him up the post player. Now here comes Caspar to the baseline. Behind the back pass to Amiibo. Fires it low to an open drain. And he laid it in. Boy, what good ball movement by the Hilltoppers. Good behind the pass leave. Uh, and a nice dish down to Drain, who found himself wide open underneath the basket. Went up and finished it. 43-40, Hilltoppers have cut the lead to three. That was Anibos first assist of the season. Garrett in the paint again with a left-handed hook shot. No good, and Harris batted it out of there, and Ocaro brings it down for the Hilltoppers to Harris. Right side, Caspar for a 10-footer, missing it. Foul on rebound, pulled down by Murray State. Here comes Fields, works his way right and left, goes on the wing to Wilson to the baseline. Wilson had it blocked by Akamane, picked up by Harris. One-on-one -on -one against Cannon, leads it to Drain. Drain stops, Drain spins, Drain scores! Wow, great move by Stefan Drain. He just stopped on a dime, let the defender fly past him was able to keep that pivot foot planted, spun on it, laid it in uncontested. Six minutes gone by and a half, and the Hilltoppers have cut it to one, 43-42. Stefan Drain's high school teammate would have loved that move. John Wall now plays for the Wizards in the NBA. Wilson fall away, three off the dribble. Missing it, rebound Garrett, back up and in. Garrett with eight, Racers 45, Hilltoppers 42, 13.47 to play, second half. I think this Murray team looks a little winded right now. This pace is uh, something they certainly are used to, but they don't look used to it at this point. Harris to the hole. Oh, my goodness. An acrobatic flip shot. It's good. He's fouled, and it counts. I thought there was no way that ball would even make it to the rim, much less go in. It was a swish. 
45-44, we watched the replay. Throws it up, his back was to the basket when he let go of the ball, Look at that. Smith. Holy cow, he was just hammered. You get to take in your pick between two Murray players that fouled him, but somehow he was able to twist and turn, look like a pretzel, and hoisted that thing up right through the string. He didn't get iron or glass. Harris with seven, trying to tie the game with his eighth point. Isaac flies it and makes it. And this game is tied. It's the seventh tie of the game. 13-37 to play, second half. WKU 45, Murray State 45. Here comes Canada across the timeline. Trying to cross over, comes to the head of the key and shoots a three over Anibo. No good, rebound, Akaro Akamane for WKU. Here's Harris front court left wing. A little tricky dribble. Baseline to Anibo. Kenny back in the corner to Brandon for a three over a hand. He's knocked down, no harm, no foul. Akamane then went over the back on the other side and there's a foul. It'll be on Okaro Akamane of WKU. Didn't look like a lot of contact there. Looks like he uh, kind of kept some separation and pried it loose, but... Here's his rainbow jumper from deep in the corner. He tried to draw a foul by falling down. Here comes George Fant for the Hilltoppers, and Stefan Drain is out, and Drain has played well off the bench with eight points, and by the way, that's a career high for the sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina. Played very well. Fouls even this half. Murray with four. Western with three team fouls. U.S. Bank is where they're always open for business to serve you. Here's Wilson front court, right side Cannon. 12.58 to play in the game. Cannon trying to drip through a double team, goes to the foul line in the lane. Throws it in the corner and it was batted away by George Fant of the Hilltoppers. And Murray State will get it back with 19 seconds left on the shot clock and a tie game at 45-45. Cannon, three of nine from the field, got eight points, but uh, Hilltopper's doing what Coach Harper wanted, and that's making him work for every point that he's had today. Wilson missing a left wing, three off the inbounds pass, rebounded by Harris. Brandon front court to Akamane, coming in hard. He's undercut and fouled in a layup attempt with 12.43 to go in the game. Well, he did a favor there for uh, for Akamane. Akamane was out of control. He's not much off the dribble uh, for the Hilltoppers. He's really good offensive spark. Working the offensive glass typically, but he was out of control, didn't have good grip on the ball, and the defender just undercut him, put him at the line for two. Fouls on Moss of Murray State. Moss has two fouls. Murray State has five as a team, and here is a car with the free throw line. He struggles from here. Four makes and five misses this season. Good. And the Hilltoppers lead 46-45. WKU's last lead in this game was at 16, there we go, it was at 9.21 to go in the first half. 46-45, Akaro shoots again and makes 47-45, two-point Hilltopper lead. Prior to the start of this game, WKU had led in 82 consecutive minutes of game time before Murray State took a lead at 5-4. 47-45, Hilltoppers, 12-40 left, and here comes Isaiah Cannon front court, 11th all-time in scoring at Murray State. Fields open, right wing for a three in the lead, and it rimmed in. Boy, that used all the rim. Crook was knocked down trying to get over his screen, and he's limping as he tried to get up to his feet and come over and guard Fields. He wasn't able to get over there in time, and the Fields jumper gives Murray State a lead, and Ray Harper takes a timeout. Murray State 48, Hilltoppers 47, 12 minutes and 23 seconds left in our second half. And on radio, we'll take a timeout. On TV, we'll keep it right here. For our radio audience, we'll take a timeout. It's 48-47, Murray State by one on the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network. On TV right here, we'll keep it. It's 48-47, Racers. And we've got a great Hilltopper family to tell you about. Yeah, it's time for the J.C. Kirby and Son Hilltopper Family Spotlight, recognizing generations of Hilltopper families and their WKU stories. This week, we're taking a look at Barry and Karen White. Both are WK alum from 1980. They have two children, Mitchell and Morgan, both attend WKU. Their favorite tradition as a family is football tailgating. They've been tailgating with the same group of people for 12 years. I bet the food's getting old. Anyway, Barry currently serves as the board president of the Hilltopper Athletic Foundation, WKU 
and, and they were the w, WKU Fan of the Year in 2010. J.C. Kirby and Son is proud to support WKU Athletics. Since 1962, J.C. Kirby and Son Funeral Chapels has served the families of South Central Kentucky with compassionate care and professional service. J.C. Kirby and Son would like to thank the South Central Kentucky community for their support and look forward to serving you for another 50 years. Go Toppers! Thank you so much, Al. One of the big keys in this game is rebounding, and the Hilltoppers have an edge over Murray State right now. At the last uh, timeout, it was a plus four for WKU. And the cleaning the glass and rebounding uh, update brought to you by Window World of Bowling Green, home with a $189 window. Also talk, ask about their $500 rebate from the TVA Energy Right program. All right. Out of the timeout, the Hilltoppers have it, 48-47. Caspar in the corner to Harris. Foul line to Ting, a call deep on the right to Caspar. Right corner wide open, Harris for the lead. Airballed it. A call though with a rebound inside. Fall away, hook shot, missed it short. And Henderson has the rebound for Murray State. Great rebound by a call, but not a good job of powering up through the defense and getting that ball back on the glass. Cannon fires it low to Garrett, pushed from behind and fouled by Fant as he was attempting a layup. Well, that's a good foul by George Fant. Somehow, some way, Brandon Garrett was wide open underneath. Cannon hit him with a great pass. After that foul, we have 11.53 to go in the second half, and now we have a media timeout. We'll take a break, both on radio and TV, here on our simulcast. Murray State 48, WKU 47, our simulcast of Hilltopper Basketball and the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network and ESPN3. It's produced by IMG, and this is WKU Basketball. Murray State leading 48-47, 11.53 to go in the second half, and it's time for our shot of the game. It may be the shot of the year, brought to you by Franklin Bank and Trust. Hometown banking at its very best. The driving shot from Harris hit with his back to the basket outside the lane on the left side. He flipped the ball up, and it went in. He later hit the free throw to complete a three-point play. That is the Franklin Bank and Trust Company shot of the game. Harris has scored eight points today. Nine is his season high. At the free throw line is Garrett, and he rolls this one on the rim and off. Garrett has scored eight points. He averages seven. He's a 6'9 senior from Phoenix, Arizona. He fires it up again and misses it long. It's tipped by Ocaro, and he retrieves it on the baseline as he jumps in the air to save it. So Garrett misses a pair. Here come the Hilltoppers with a chance to take the lead. 11.45 to go in the second half. And right now, Jamal Crook is back on the bench with that injury. Hilltoppers without T.J. Price today. He's injured, too. Here's Caspar, long range left side. Low to Fant, knocked away by Daniel. Retrieved again by Caspar, trolling in the corner. Caspar saves it. O'Carl's there to fight for it. It's tipped, and Murray gets it. Half-court pass intercepted by Brandon Harris. Harris, a three for the lead. Oh, in and out, oh. look good, didn't go. What a flurry of activity. Great hustle by both teams there to pick up that loose ball. Fields the other way for Murray State. Cannon out front between the circles. One-on-one -on -one against Ocaro Kamene. Backs up, comes to his right in the lane. Flips it up on the run. No good, got his own rebound. Flips it up again. No good, missing two. Baseline rebound by Ocaro Kamene. Here come the Hilltoppers again. 11 minutes to go in a game with a chance to take the lead once again. Cannon now three of 11. He does a great job of getting shots. He just hasn't had a great day for, for making them. Foul out front, a hand check on Isaiah Cannon as he was guarding Brandon Harris. And for the racers, that's 16 fouls. That could be a key. Hilltoppers only have four. Just the reverse in the first half. Yep. Not much of a foul. Here comes the pass to Harrison back. Crook out with a leg injury. Brandon's playing a lot of point guard here in this second half. And he was recruited as a point guard. Some people felt like he may even win the job from, from uh, Crook this year. The Ting misses a right wing three, but uh, Crook has had a fabulous senior season. Yes, he has. So they played together, and Harris has mostly been the two guard when Jamal Crook has been in the game. I like that combination. Crook has been awfully good at the point in his senior season. Unfortunately, we're not getting to see him play very much this game because he's got that injury. Field in between the circles of Cannon against Harris, who's left with a dribble, and he's fouled off the move on the left wing with 10-15 to play in the second half. Akaro Kamene now has four fouls. So Akaro was out, 
Stefan Drain comes in. Kenny Nebo is in. Tercy Blade is in. Fant, who's had a quiet game, is out. And Ting Cole, who has 14 points, checks out as well. Three substitutions for head coach Ray Harper. Here comes an inbounds pass. Holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it. Five second violation or a timeout. Oh, what came they first? They call a five. And we're going to have a. Uh, the other official, this is the one that, this is the official that Ray's been crossways with a couple times, but he's the one that overruled it and allowed the uh, timeout for Murray State. So the racers take one. And each team now has three timeouts for the last 10 minutes of this game. Murray State 48, WKU 47. This game has featured six lead changes and seven ties. Murray State, the home team. Murray State, the healthier team. But uh, the Hilltoppers have battled them so far through 30 minutes, or trailing by one. Murray State led by five at halftime, but that doesn't mean too much in a WKU game. Eight of the last 12 times the Hilltoppers have trailed at intermission. They've won the game. Well, they do battle. That's for sure. They uh, they, they keep with it. Their, their uh, depth has helped uh, so far, but right now that depth is starting to go away. They got a lot of walking wounded on that bench. Inbounds pass comes to Garrett, knocked away and out of bounds, and Murray State will get it back. Jeffrey Moss is having problems finding racers open. He's the trigger man on the baseline. And he has it again. He looks inside, nobody there. Daniel broke open, but then Daniel broke to the left wing and gets it. Now gives it out in half court to Cannon. And Harris is on him. Halfway through the second half, racers by one, 48-47. Cannon to the right side, to the right wing. Harris right with him. Good crossover move to the baseline. Hook shot on the run. No good. Leaping rebound by Percy Blade of WKU. Blade shot up for that one-hand carom. Here come the Hilltoppers down by one. Harris in between the circles. Harris to the foul line. In the lane, six-footer for the lead. On the rim and in! Brandon Harris with a career high in his first year at WKU. He has scored 11. 49-48. Hilltoppers by one. 9.37 left. Oh, that was a great running shot in the lane by Brandon Harris. Deadened it by shooting the knuckleball up there, and it caught the front iron and rolled in for him. With Crook and Price out with injuries, Harris looking to score more this afternoon. Drain and Daniel really fighting each other for position inside. Pull up Jeffrey Cannon, headed to key. Good! Murray State back in front, 50 to 49. Only 10 for Cannon, he averages 21 a game. And he can still get him. He is a very explosive offensive player. Can get points in a hurry. Harris the other way for WKU. Harris left wing dribble. Eight footer off the window. Bang down. And Brandon puts WKU back in front as this lead goes back and forth here this afternoon. 8.55 to go. WKU 51, Murray State 50. 12 for Brandon Harris. Matches his jersey number. Moss on the left wing against Blade. He brings it to the right for the dribble. Drain came out and bumped him. Pretty aggressive. His uh, brake shoe lining must have been worn. He couldn't put the brakes on there. Ran into the ball handler way away from the basket. He wore it out on that, on that uh, move he made Maybe. earlier this half offensively, didn't Maybe he? Have. Remember, with Coke Zero, you can enjoy everything. This is a game to enjoy here today. Murray State 51, WKU 50. And Moss will make the pass from the right sideline. Comes out at Wilson in half court. Stacey Wilson's been quiet this half. Picks up his dribble. The right wing to Garrett. Bubbled it. Threw it back out to Wilson between the rings. Wilson now works it from right to left against Brandon's man on man defense. He's on the left wing. A one-hand pass based on to Daniel. He backs in on Drain. Knocked him over. No charge. No block. And he laid it in and scored. And Murray stayed back in front. 52-51 with 8.14 left. Harris headed to key. Harris stops, left to the key to drain, dribbles it to the right, he's fouled off the move. That'll be team foul seven on Murray State. And Stefan Drain will shoot a one and one with eight minutes and five seconds left to go in the game. Drain has not shot the free throw very much this year, one of two coming into this game. Garrett, the foul. And for the racer front court senior, he has three. Here is Stefan Drain, a career high of eight this afternoon. Comes in averaging just a point and a half per game. 
Harris will exit for the Hilltoppers. And Okaro Akamane is in. WKU much bigger. Kaspar also in. Drain missed the free throw. And Daniel has the Murray State rebound. Here's Wilson the other way for the racers. Murray State by one. Just under eight minutes to go in the game. Moss against Takaro on the wing to field. Force jumper over Kaspar. Missed everything with the floor. And it's saved in bounds by Murray State, but picked up by Okaro in backcourt. Now to Kaspar across the timeline. WKU down one. Kevin to the right side with the dribble to the wing. He's had a, really a tough day. Picks it up and a timeout in front of the Hilltopper bench by head coach Ray Harper. 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here in our simulcast with Murray State leading 52-51. The Racers are 7-1. They've won four in a row. And WKU with a six-game winning streak. They are eight up and two down. And it looks as if Jamal Crook, uh, they're not going to get much out of him today, Hal. He's just, tr he's been trying to, to battle through whatever that injury is that occurred sometime in the first half. But as we see in the huddle, Jamal is, uh, is behind the five players who are playing. And Ray felt like Jamal was a key in this game. They needed a senior to have a big game. Unfortunately, he's had some kind of an ankle, foot, or a leg injury. And uh, he hasn't played very many minutes. Well, I thought we'd need a big game out of Jamal, too. And uh, I remember the the point in the game where he came up limping, but I don't know what the extent of the injury was. And I have not seen trainer Mike Gaddy working on him at any point. So I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is. Caspar is going to make the inbounds pass next to the Hilltopper bench. Around the Sunbelt Conference earlier today, North Texas beat Southeastern Louisiana 45-40, and Arkansas State was a 12-point winner over Austin P, 69-57. That is the Gerald Printing Sunbelt Conference update. Gerald Printing, design, print, and mail. Hilltoppers are on the road at VCU Tuesday night, and that game is scheduled to start at 6 p.m. Central Time. We will not have that for you in the simulcast. It'll be a radio broadcast only from Richmond. I'll be played in a sold-out Siegel Center on Campus Arena of Virginia Commonwealth University. Harris has it, left to the key to Tinga Cole. Back to Harris, able to shot clock. He's out near half court. Fields is guarding him. He'll dribble to his left and launch a long three. Boom, perfect! Wow, that was a long three. That was a good five feet above. That's NBA range right there. 10 points this half for Harris. 15 in the game. WKU 54, Murray State 52. Seven minutes left. Pass lob left side to Cannon against Harris. He'll go one on one. He'll answer back against Harris. Bam! He came right back and made, made one. What a game! Boy, this is. This is what makes college basketball worth watching. These fans in this arena are on their feet. Just a great atmosphere. 12 lead changes, 55-54 racers, 6.38 left. Harris on the right wing, low to Tinga Cole. Backs in, they're not doubling, turn around eight footer. No good, baseline rebound by Murray State's Wilson. Wilson across the timeline to the foul line, jumper from there, on the rim and off. Batted out of bounds by whom? Blade hit it last. It'll be Murray State basketball after the media timeout. Six minutes, 22 seconds left on this one for Murray State, and the race is behind it. Three from Cannon, leading WKU 55-54. And our simulcast of WKU Hilltopper basketball on the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network and ESPN3. It's produced by IMG. Randy and Howe with our simulcast from the Bluegrass Cellular Press Row in Murray. Racers in front, 55-54. Harris and Cannon exchanging three-pointers. Brandon Harris has scored 10 points this half, 15 in a game. And the highly recruited backcourt star out of a junior college in Colorado last year having his best game as a hilltopper. They need it today from him, Howe. He has not shot it well this year until today. Without Crook and without Price, they're out with injuries. Harris needs a score, and he is. Is scoring indeed, and the Hilltoppers have been able to step up with key players injured, and uh, this is a good example of it here today. Daniel leans in on Finn off the dribble and scores from the right side from about five feet away. 
Race is 57, he'll top for 54, six minutes left. Harris left wing, grounded by Daniel. Threw it into a load of Fant, a flop, there was no block, there was no charge. Garrett fell down and Fant said, thank you very much, big man. You can't block it when you're seated, I'll score. Yeah, a little bit of contact there, but it certainly was a flop. The official didn't uh, didn't give the defender the benefit of the doubt on that one. Fan was six, racers 57, WKU 56, 540 to go. Fields long range right side against Caspar. Lobs it high up in the air to Garrett at the top of the key against Nicole. Back to Cannon, three over Harris. Swish. He's somewhere. Now Murray State leads it by four. 60 to 56, and Cannon has scored 16 points. Now six of 15 from the field and four from eight. He struggled, but like I said, he is capable of putting up lots of points in a short period of time. There's a whistle, a stoppage in play. There's some perspiration and sweat under the basket the Hilltoppers are shooting at. That's why they have stopped play. There's no timeout. Coach Harper quickly got his team together, though, to shout out some words of encouragement and maybe a quick play call here with the racers up by four. Cannon is starting to warm up from the perimeter right now. And that's a bad day for opponents when Cannon finds the range, and he appears to have done just that here in Murray. Cannon is 11 threes away from becoming Murray State's all-time leader. Harris between the circles. Gets it up to George Fant. Left to right dribble to the foul line. Went around a double team. Banked it up. No good. Knocked away. And Harris gets it back on the left wing. Harris to the top of the key. Harris in the paint. Right corner. Caspar. Jump in the air. Off the rim. Twice. No good. Battle four. Wilson gets it. Three on one the other way. Wilson against Caspar. Lays it up. Missed it. Daniel got a hand on it. Didn't get it. Wilson got it. Put it back up and in. Well, good bounce for Murray. Coach Harper is out on the floor. Almost to the free throw line. Calling for a timeout. So the racers now lead at 62-56, and any time they've had a long rebound, they really get out and go after it, and they've been able to score on those infrequent opportunities. It's happened uh, happened on several occasions, and Coach Harper, again, not happy with officiating, doing a fair amount of barking at these guys here this afternoon. Speaking of Coach Harper, his radio show in Bowling Green at Toots Restaurant has been moved from Monday to Wednesday this week. So for all of you who like to come by Toots or listen on the radio, it's Wednesday. Ray will be in Richmond on Monday. That's Toots Restaurant, 7 to 8 o'clock Wednesday night in Bowling Green for the Ray Harper Show. Racers now have outscored the Hilltoppers 10 to 2. Over the last, the last two minutes, minutes. And seven seconds. They are capable of putting up lots of points in short time. They're at 62. They average 80. Murray State's biggest lead, eight. That was early in this half at 41-33. We've had seven ties and 12 lead changes. WKU has one timeout remaining. Murray with three. Doesn't look as if Jamal Crook will play the rest of the game. The Hilltopper leader is on the bench with an injury. He's averaging 16 a game. Next to him is T.J. Price. He averages 17 a game, and he's out, too. Here's Casper between the circles. Deep in the left wing to Harris. Fumbled the ball and got it back quickly. They're all over him like a shirt. Trying to fight with the double team. He gets it back and it's knocked away. Dribbles to the wing. He's in the paint. Dribbled off his chin. He's knocked down. Fields with a steal. Fields coming down, and Fields scores. Yeah, too much dribbling by... Brandon Harris that particular time he's given a lift to the Hilltoppers offensively uh, but a bad bad use of the ball that bad use of possession that time let's see if they go to Tinga Cole or Fant this time down here's Harris deep on the right side down by eight top of the key to a pull shoots a three short he's been short this half played the Kevin alive on the wing to Caspar for 14 footer no good Kevin just can't buy one can't today buy one races are running and here comes Wilson front court left wing Mary State now slowing it down. It's in the hands of Cannon. Caspar has missed all five of the shots today. Bouncing it right at the key to Daniel. Squares up, baseline to Cannon. Eight footer down. Mary State has now outscored the Hilltoppers 14 to 2 and lead it by 10. 66 56. 325 left. Harris in the lane, stopping, deep on the wing to a call. Back to Harris, knocked away by Wilson. A lot of contact out there. Now he's hit by Daniel off the dribbles. He takes it to the rim, he puts it up. It's good, they're gonna wipe it away though, and a foul on the drive, I believe. Yep, they will not count that basket. Media timeout, Murray State now leading by 10, their biggest lead. Three minutes, 14 seconds to play. Racer 66, Hilltoppers 56. 
on our simulcast of WKU Basketball on the Hilltopper Radio Network and ESPN3. It's produced by IMG, and this is WKU Basketball. It was 57-56, Murray State with six minutes left. And now the Racers have scored nine in a row to lead it by 10 with 3.14 to go. It's time to recap the Leachman Buick GMC Cadillac keys to a Hilltopper win. They were on our radio pregame show with Ray Harper. First of all, limiting easy buckets for Murray State in transition. And they've done that pretty much, I think, for the most part. Uh, looks like they're look, maybe running out of gas just a little bit. Murray's got some easy ones during this last series. The other key was eliminating turnovers, and as of right now, only seven. Yeah, Toppers have done a pretty good job handling the ball today. They've had a couple of uh, unforced turnovers for sure, but they've done a nice job because Murray has uh, continued to really put a lot of pressure on the point guards out front. Brandon Harris sinks the free throw, and Harris now has 16 points. Ching a call with 14. Brandon came in averaging four points a game, makes it. He was shooting 26% for the year prior to this afternoon. 66-58, crowded in the backcourt, almost stolen at the sideline. They come with a two-on-one. Yeah, Wilson has Dana for an alley -oop. throws it up there, slam dunk. You can see that one coming. Hilltoppers did a good job double teaming. Had a couple opportunities to pick the ball off in the backcourt. Couldn't come up with it. Murray with the numbers, lobs for Daniel for the easy hot percentage shot. Three minutes left, racers up 10. Harris long range left side, shoots a long three. Good! good. What a game from Brandon Harris. That was right in front of us, and I mean five, six feet beyond the arc. And the racers are just throwing it away. Daniels throw down the right sideline, and front court to Wilson was too high and wide, and it's a turnover for Murray State. Coach Harper sheds that jacket finally. Coach Perlman dumped his early in the game. Coach Harper stayed with it until just recently, and he's... The pace he's running up and down that sideline, he might come out of the shirt and tie before it's over with. Harris, one of the reasons the Hilltoppers recruited him is for his outside shooting, and he lit it up this summer, but has not had the outside stroke during the year, only a 24% three-point shooter. However, today he's bombed in three threes and has scored 20. 2.40 to go. Here comes Harris front court. Hilltoppers down seven. Brandon right at the key, to the top of the key. Pulls up for a three. Daniel blocked it. Harris got it back, though. In the corner to Blade. Looking, looking. Loda Fant makes a catch. Strong with a ball. Put it up. Missed it off of Daniel and out of bounds. And WK will get it back on the baseline with 2.25 to go and down by seven. George Shorter on that one a little bit. He's had some opportunities inside today. He's not shot the ball particularly well. Only three of eight. But he's had lots of opportunities in close. Caspar looking. And on the floor is Blade on the baseline. And if it's on Murray State, It'll be Blade to the free throw line for a one and one. And it is on Murray State's Jeffrey Moss. Coach Harper going offense, defense, bringing in a coming A and, and uh, who is that on the other side of Kansas City? Drain. Yeah, Drain came in as well. And Drain has a career high of eight today. Cole and Fant to the bench. Blade has three points. He had opportunities on scholarship at other schools, Division I schools, and he wanted to come to WKU. He felt like this program, which has had such a storied tradition, was going to be good again. And this year, Hilltoppers are 8-2 and two and have been battling a myriad of injuries. Yep, they have. I looked across at the bench and see Crook and Price there. That's 31 points out of this Hilltopper starting lineup. Late for a 1-1. One one. It's short. And Daniel has a one-handed rebound in the lane. Cannon now has the ball in backcourt. Cannon left wing with two minutes and 15 seconds left. They come to double Cannon, dribbles around the double team, fires it low to Daniel, we dropped it, it went out of bounds. Good pass. Great pass by Cannon, I mean just a rifle shot. And Daniels just wasn't ready, he was wide open underneath. He'll top her big man, can't fall asleep in that back with all the action going on out front. They've got to stick close to their man, know where their man is at all times. Fant and Cole back in for offense. So Ray's really working over there on the sideline. Yes, he is. And Caspar will throw it in backcourt to Harris with 2.10 to play. Coming up on our radio, part of the simulcast, we'll have our post-game show brought to you by the Medical Center for the radio station in your area. Stay tuned for that. Caspar, long range right side. 
Stops right at Akita Brandon. Fake the jumper. Steps through slip. Three pointer in the air. Holy moly! 23 for Brandon Harris. He cuts the Murray State lead to four. And there's a timeout taken by WKU with a minute 51 to go. It's 68 64. Racers by four. Yeah, that was a great shot. Came off a screen at the top. Faked when he caught. The defender flew past. You'll get to see it a replay uh, on our simulcast, but he dribbled to a wide open spot right at the top of the key and buried it. Brandon from Oklahoma City, about uh, two weeks into the season, Coach Harper and I were talking about Brandon. They recruited Brandon for his uh, point guard skills and shooting. Well, he only had about four assists at that time for the entire season, and he was shooting under 30%. So the two things they recruited him for, he wasn't doing well. The two things they did anticipate is rebounding ability at six foot one. He's had three game, four games this year of at least eight rebounds, and his on-ball defense. So. Ray saw some things he liked, didn't see those early, found some other things that Brandon did better than they anticipated, and now today, his shot's coming back. Well, I saw him early in the season, George Fant's dad leading the cheers uh, for WKU, you can see on our simulcast, but uh, I liked Brandon Harris from the, from the first time that I saw him. He's got great quickness, he shoots the ball well, passes it well, he's a real floor general. This has been the first opportunity he's had to really run this show for the Hilltoppers, and he's seizing the opportunity. Carpe diem, say the Marines, and he <laughs> is seizing it. Murray State has the ball in backcourt. Hilltoppers have 16 fouls, Murray State with nine. Here's a Coors Light cold hard fact. 21 means 21. Wilson will make the backcourt pass. Runs to his right, up the sideline to Garrett in backcourt. Now in the middle to Cannon, pressure broken. Cannon, Blake trying to place him for me, chasing for behind the double team. And lobs it up for grabs, and it's caught at half court by Fields. Akara was on him. Now to Wilson, he's double teamed at half court. His trap is falling over, and a whistle. And a timeout taken by Murray State. The official on the play did not call the timeout. The bench did, so the official on the other side of the court was the one who blew the whistle. And if that timeout did not occur, Wilson would have fallen over in back court for an over and back as you watch the replay under simulcast. Drain at 6-7, and Okamane at 6-7 had him contained at half court, and he was falling over. Wester with a 6-0 run over the last minute and three seconds have gotten this, gotten themselves back into this game. Down four, Murray with nine team fouls. Western will be in the double bonus from this point on. Western's next foul will put Murray at state for or Murray State at the line for one and one. The Hilltoppers at eight and two. The Lady Toppers won today at home at Diddle Arena. They are eight and two. Wilson will make the inbounds pass from half court. WKU does not have a timeout left. Murray State has two. Wilson to Daniel front court right side. Backdoor fields caught it and landed any backdoor pass bar. Mm. Boy, that hurts. Murray State scored a couple of times and out of bounds plays this out. And now the racer lead at six with a minute 25 left. They're all over Harris out front. He falls down on his hands and knees and That'll a crowd violation's been called. Costly mistake right there. Brandon Harris got down on the floor with it, but when he caught, he slid. Picked up a turnover and probably some floor burns. One minute, 21 seconds left. WK brings in Eddie Alcantara, the freshman from Chicago. He comes in and Caspar is out. Kevin limping too. He had knee surgery last year and missed half the year. Actually, he's holding his right hip. So now Caspar's out. Here's a backward pass to Cannon, half court to Wilson. Wilson to the free throw line. Ran by Alcantara, who fouled him. They gave it to Daniel, who dunked it, and he's hanging on the rim so he doesn't fall on one of his teammates. Basket does not count. Team foul seven, and it'll be free throws for the Racers with a minute 16 to go. Well, Isaiah Cannon is awfully hard to double team. They've tried and tried. He's like a handful of jello. You just can't can't get a grip on him. He uh, quick. He makes great passes. Always heads up delivery. Really, really good ball handler. He's exceedingly quick. Yeah. Well, off the dribble, you can't guard him in the phone booth. No. Here's Wilson, who is two for four. He'll shoot a one and one with Murray State up by six and 76 seconds remaining. No good. And there's a Tinga Cole rebound. Still a chance with 74 seconds left. Harris coming front court. They're really cutting off his three. About a 30-footer off the dribble, and that banged in and out. 
And here comes Cannon down the right sideline after the rebound. One minute left. They double team him, foul him at half court. One minute, one second left. Got to be one and one. Harris has certainly hit some long distance shots. Uh, that would way out. Uh, probably 28, 30 feet. Shot it too hard. Here's Cannon with a one and one. It's his first free throw of the game, and he's a 77% free throw shooter. He scored 16. Make it 17. He scored 20 or more in five of Murray State's eight games. Racer 71. He'll top her 64. He shoots and makes 72 64. Murray State by eight. One minute to go. Here's Harris across the timeline. In between the circles, deep to Ting. Ting fake the three. Bounce pass in the paint to Fan. Hard up on Daniel. Banged it in with the right hand off the window. Good strong move there by George Fan. 72 66. The pass backwards went off the backboard for Murray State, but again, here comes Cannon splitting a double team with 43 seconds to go in the game and 28 on the shot clock. Cannon between the circles, dribbles through two, gets it back with a head high dribble, and he's fouled by Blade with 36 seconds left. <laughs> 18 for Cannon. He'll shoot two free throws with 36 seconds left. Blade with his third foul. Two free throws here. And doesn't give the Hilltoppers much hope to come back. His first free throw is good. 19 for Isaiah Cannon. He had 18 against WKU last year. 73-66. Tell you what, it's been a heck of an effort by this Hilltopper team this afternoon. If we ever get everybody healthy again, really like the prospects yes. for, this, for this team. Gannon short, 73-66 racers. Here's Harris deep on the right side with 30 seconds ago. There's a pick by Fant. Harris to the top of the key. Baseline to Alcantara. Puts up the shot. In and out. No good. Rebound George. Fant put it back up and in. 23 seconds are left at 73-68 Murray State. And a foul. Wilson in backcourt, who's missed three of his five free throws today. It's probably a pretty good foul. Wilson, 65 percent on the season, 13 of 20 coming into this one. But uh, if he's missed three of five, it's in his head just a little bit. Yep. Wilson has scored 11. He averages 17. He's a senior from Mullen, South Carolina. It was the fifth guard on last year's team that finished 31 and two and number 12 in the nation. And that foul shot's good. That was the 10th team foul. Murray State 74, Hilltopper 68. WKU in action at BCU Tuesday. And goodness knows who will play with the injuries uh, this team has. Maybe Jamal will be able to come back and play. He hits a pair at 75, 68, 22 seconds left. Murray State by seven. Harris down the middle of the court behind Fan. Left to the key on the wing. Ball is knocked away. Harris gets it back. Here's Brandon searching for an open player. Alcantara in the corner for a three. In and out. Rebound. Knocked out of bounds by Murray State's Dexter Fields. And with eight seconds remaining, WK will have the ball in the baseline. Well, Alcantara and Snake bitten on those two shots. Both of them looked good. They were halfway down in the in the tube and came back out. Here comes Kevin Caspar. They bring him in, and Alcantara will leave. Caspar coming in. He's limping with a, a hip injury. Now, he, had a, he has a bad floor burn and bruise on his right hip. That's probably what that's all about. Left wing to Blade, rising up for a three. No, it's short. Rebounded inside by Murray State's Garrett. Ting is there. One second to go. And a good, good possession play. is uh, a tie up there. Fields and Ting and Cole going in one of the, just a little bit. Actually, more Fields and Ting. And now they get in and make sure nothing happens here with one Garrett. second to go. Ting and uh, Fields are the ones who are kind of hung up. And Garrett for Murray did the wise thing. He quickly jerked Fields out of the play and pulled him away from all that play. Good, good call by, by uh, Garrett. You see Fields in there. The motions get a little rough. Ooh. He just came up with an elbow to the sure chin of Ting and Cole. And they're going to go, well, I thought they might go look at that, too, to see. But very quick to be the peacemaker, smoke a peace pipe quickly and get his teammate out of that. One second left, alley-oop to Anibo, makes a catch, one dribble, put it up at the buzzer, and it will count, and the game is over. Well, that was a heck of a game. I'll tell you what, Hilltoppers came up five short. They took the lead a couple times in the second half after being down by five in the first half.
but just too much Isaiah Cannon in the second half, too much Murray Racers. Racers get the win. With seven minutes to go, Brandon Harris had a three-pointer to give WKU a 54-52 lead. But then the Racers scored nine out of the next ten, and they end up winning it by five at 75-70. So the Racers advance to eight and one. Field topper's six-game losing or winning streak is over at eight up and three down. WKU continues this tough week. They'll be at VCU on Tuesday for a 7 o'clock game. They'll be in Nashville for Saturday against Louisville. So for Hal Smith, this is Randy Lee and our crew. Thanks so much for joining us. From Murray, Kentucky, where the racers today win it over the Hilltoppers, 75-70. On our simulcast on the Hilltoppers Sports Network and ESPN3, it was produced today by IMG.